Hey, it's Sharon here from ContentSparks.com and in this video I'm going to give you a peek inside my project management tool because a lot of my customers have asked me how I'm able to crank out products so quickly and so consistently every month. And part of that is I do have a very strict process I follow and some templates and of course an amazing team. But I also have um, really good tools that I use and one of them is this project management tool called Asana, A-S-A-N-A. -A. So I'll give you a peek inside. I don't use all the features but I'll show you the ones that I do use. Now when you first log in and open it, you'll get to this window that has all your tasks. See at the top here it says My Tasks. And I can filter those. Uh, the default right now is View Incomplete Tasks, but I could say filter those by due date or filter them by project as well. Um, there are some other views as well, like the calendar. I don't really use this that much because it can get a little confusing for other team members because it shows the due date and what I found becomes confusing is people think that that's the day they should be working on something where it's actually the day it's due so you need to work on it before then. Uh, there's also files. These are just different files that have been uploaded. I tend to keep mine in Dropbox just because I don't want them uh, affiliated just with a specific project or you know unless there is something that's just for a project then and I don't want to share it with multiple people then I'll do that but in general I stick to the list and then on the left hand side there are all my different projects listed and at the top I keep my favorites the ones that I'm using right away in fact I'll show you um, in any of the projects you have there's something called project actions and I can click on that and add it to the favorites and then move it up it'll move up to the top on the left and I actually prefer to work in each project uh, so that I'm more compartmentalized I'm focused on just one project at a time so for instance let me click on this one that's called product creation calendar this isn't so much a project or so much as a way that I keep track of all the products I have planned for the year. So it's almost like a calendar on its own but I found it's a much easier way to just have one place where we can look ahead and see what we're going to be working on throughout the year. And I divide everything up by sections which is a very easy thing to do in Asana. You just type it in and put this colon after it. So for instance, uh, let's go to the bottom. Say I was setting up for uh, June. I would just put in June, put a colon, and it makes it a section. And then I can go in and add tasks underneath each one. So that's how I keep track looking forward so that I don't have multiple, multiple projects going on. I'll just create a project out of one of these when we get closer to it. And the way I do that is I keep a template. Down on the left here in more projects, you can click on to see more, I have say a template for a new training program. And what that is, is a project where I've set up the different phases for the project. So I created those sections and I listed out all the tasks that, uh, that are associated with that. I don't have people next to them or dates or anything right now because this is a template. And to use it, I would just click on the very top, there's a down arrow, click the down arrow, and I can use this as a template. So it would copy the whole project over, and then I can rename it, maybe add or delete some tasks, put names and dates next to them for who's responsible. So I found this to be absolutely the easiest, fastest way to keep cranking out products. Have this template, have all the tasks already identified that you're going to be doing each time, and then start working on them. Now let me just show you inside some of the things you can do on that. I'll go down to one. Well, here's just one where, you know, review content from writers. So say when I get something back, who's going to review it? and I can assign it at the top by just clicking on it. I could quickly assign it to me or someone else. I can set a due date where I just click on the calendar and even an add a 
due time, so if something is very time sensitive, or even set to repeat if it's going to be something that happens over and over. I can favorite it, I never do that. I can tag it, but so you can filter projects or tasks across projects, I never use that. Um, subtasks is something I do use if there's a, a specific task that has a few things associated with it subtasks then I'll do that but if there are a lot of subtasks then it's better to just create a whole project out of that and that's even an option if you have a task that has so many subtasks it should be something on its own uh, that is over here where it has task actions you can convert it to a project you can copy it all sorts of different things I put a little bit of a description in there and then as the task is going on I can make comments, whoever else is working on it will see that as an alert in their email box or in their inbox at the very top. I'll show you that in a, sec in a second. Let me see if there's one that has some subtasks. Obviously this is a template so it doesn't necessarily have them yet. Here I think I have one in the latest project that we're doing on project management. Let me show you that one. Now this one, most of the tasks are already checked off and done, and you'll see there's a check mark after each one or before each one, and you can just check that off when it's done. For instance, here I've already set up my Facebook ad, so I'll just mark it as complete. It disappears. And there is one in here, not that one here. You can see that we had comments. We had a whole conversation going back and forth on the content for marketing. Um, social bookmarking. Here's some subtasks where I just put a list of different things where we have to make sure we bookmark the content that we, that's been created. So, and then I could assign this to different people. For instance, if we're doing, if I have different people creating the content for marketing, I could have subtasks where I'm assigning one thing to a designer, one thing to a writer, stuff like that. Um, here you can see I have a task for creating my video. So I really break it down into as many little tasks as possible. Let's see, there's another thing here called conversations. This is another one that I have not used yet, but I think I'm going to give a try to. It's for having a conversation or brainstorming on a project. They say it's for kicking off projects, discussing tasks, so you could have a whole team conversation going on a particular topic or brainstorming ideas rather than having just those comments on a task. So that looks like a kind of a cool feature that they've added that I haven't tried yet. But really that's most of the things for important communications rather than just using comments on here. I use Skype and email. As I said, I use Dropbox more for files rather than attaching them in Asana. And for emergencies, I'm not going to use this. I would use a text message or the phone, even the phone, to communicate with someone. And I don't use Asana for all the tasks for team members. So if it's a one-time outsourced job, like something for my writers, I wouldn't put it in here because it just confuses them and then they can't focus if they see all this other stuff going on. And it's just another tool for them to learn that becomes more confusing. I mainly use it for myself and for team members who are working on multiple tasks on a project. So my project manager, my tech person, or maybe if I'm working with one person on something in particular. So I hope this was helpful. I know everyone has their favorite tool, but if you're looking for a new one, I definitely recommend you give Asana a try, especially since it does have so many features and it's free.